And the land was polluted with the blood of idolaters. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, today is Rose Sunday. So brought to mind another example of roses. Rose, the roses of Our Lady of Guadalupe. You know the story, I, I'm sure, the, the history that almost exactly 500 years ago, uh, Hernando Cortez comes from Spain and he arrives in what we call nowadays Mexico and there are 10 million Indians, the Nahuatl Indians and then all these the various tribes, the most powerful being the Aztecs. He arrives there and what had been going on for a long time before this was uh, human sacrifice, idolatry, all sorts of horrible things, although you can read, it's impressive. The, the Aztecs were uh, very efficient, very intelligent, very industrious, great engineers. There's there a lot of impressive things about them on the natural level. They're very advanced. But at the same time, because of their paganism, because of their barbarism, there was incredible numbers of, of human sacrifice to their pagan gods. They, 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 they estimate one in every five children was sacrificed on their altars. One of every five. So you can see, it's, it's interesting for us to note, living in the world we live in now, you can be very advanced, you can be very impressive and on a natural level, but be the most horrific and horrible butchers of children, of people. And he arrives there and they were averaging, you know, tens of thousands of humans were sacrificed of their own people every single month. Tens of thousands in the name of their false religion. So on some big feast days, it'd be 20,000, 30,000 people sacrificed every day. So I'm not going to go into the whole history of this, but Cortez and his small group of soldiers, they finally overcome the Aztecs and they free all of these slaves and they put in, let's say, Spanish rule. But we are all human beings and we're all weak. And the original rulers that they put over, these Spanish rulers, they brought over a Spanish Franciscan uh, priest as well and a bishop. But the Spanish rulers, the civil rulers, were not good men. They were vicious and they were uh, very cruel. So these Spanish Fran the Franciscans and the bishop, they made almost no progress. You know, there for a couple of years. And at one point, the, the, the bishop was a very holy man, Zumaraga, the bishop Zumaraga. He writes a secret letter to the king saying, we are in daily danger of being killed by the, by the Indians because the, our, our own Spanish civil rulers are so evil and they don't want to convert anyhow so this whole place is going to be lost these 10 million indians we're just going to have to walk away or, or we're going to be killed in the meantime we don't know it's, it's basically saying it's nearly hopeless but he says however I, I remain confident in the unfailing help of the queen of heaven so this is the state before the famous Juan Diego incident. Juan Diego, this, this local, simple, good man, he converts and every day he walks six miles to go to attend mass over this hill. And one day, as you know, he's walking over the hill, December the, the 9th, and that's where Our Lady appears to him. Our Lady tells him to come near and she says, I am the ever virgin, holy Mary, mother of the true God for whom we live, the creator of all things. I want a temple erected here quickly so that I might show and give my love, my compassion, my help, my protection because I'm your merciful mother. Go to the Bishop of Mexico and tell him of my desire, etc., etc. So Juan Diego, the simple peasant, goes to the, the very holy bishop Zumaraga, and like any good bishop, any good cleric, when some people comes and says they've just seen Our Lady on the side of the hill, they, yeah, okay, that's very nice, yeah, very, okay, thank you for telling me. Uh, 
please leave. Uh, it's the, the, a good and normal reaction. You don't believe everything. Then the next day, Our Lady appears to him again, says, go again tomorrow and tell the bishop again that I, the ever-virgin Holy Mary, Mother of God, sent you. So go again and do it. So like this time he goes to the bishop. The bishop says, okay, well, maybe not a crazy person, but okay, tell, go back and tell her that I need a sign. I can't just believe your word. I need a sign. I need something. But as you know, there's a very, it's almost humorous in the way this works out. Juan Diego's uncle is very sick, maybe dying. So Juan Diego trying to find a priest to come visit his dying uncle. And because of that, he doesn't want to see Our Lady. <laughs> so I, I should really go, like I was told to by the bishop and by Our Lady, but my uncle's dying. And when someone's dying, that takes higher precedence over even the Queen of Heaven. So he takes another way around. He's like, I don't want to bump into her again because I need to get to, to this, get the priest. My uncle is dying. This is very important. This, he was right. He was absolutely right. And Our Lady doesn't let that stop her. She's the Queen of Heaven. So she appears him on that side of the mountain, on the side of the hill, and says, do not fear about your uncle. I'll fix that problem. She, she heals him directly from a distance. Don't be worried about him. He's cured. Now, go up to the top of the hill there, and you will find some beautiful roses. You collect the roses, and you bring them to the bishop. It's a miracle because it's winter time. It's a dry, hard, rocky hill. There's just thorns and thistles. There's, there's no roses. And he goes up there, and he finds the roses. He collects them, puts them in his, his tilma. A tilma is like a, a, a coat or like a cloak made out of cactus. It's made out of a vegetable, out of a plant. A very poor man's clothing. He collects the the, the all of the uh, the roses are so many he has to like use his clothing to hold on to them all. Then he goes to the bishop's house, as you know. He drops his uh, the, the folded tilma in front of the bishop, and not only these Spanish roses, which are not even native, they fall on the ground in front of the bishop, but on the Tilma is the famous image of Our Lady, which we have near our confessional there. Okay, the bishop and everyone there falls on their knees, and it's it's clear it's a miracle. Let us talk a little bit about this miracle, because remember, Our Lady can do all this. She has the she is the Mother of God. She she has that ability, and I think even where you live, you live in a country of many millions of pagans who are murdering people and children every single day. More than 10,000, more than 20,000, more than 50,000. They're murdering their souls in mortal sin by all of the vices. They're also murdering children through abortion, yes, or by contraception. But they're also just, even worse, murdering souls. So, so we have to have this... So certain we, we could be in the case of the bishop uh, uh, in Mexico, like uh, to the king, we can't do anything. This, this is over. The end is near. We will be killed by them or we, or we will never be able to convert them. But we must have hope in Our Lady. And she does this wonderful miracle. And, and the miracle, it's one of these interesting miracles, a bit like the Shroud of Turin. If you know much about the Shroud of Turin, I'm sure you do. It's a miracle that was worked by our Lord at his resurrection, the image of our Lord on the Shroud of Turin, the Shroud which wrapped our Lord. But much of that miracle was only visible when, with the invention of photography. You know, it was always a, a very holy relic, but we only understood how much of a miracle it was when they developed photography a couple hundred years ago. And then we could see how amazing it was. We could learn more and more. Sometimes God, he time releases there's a time release on his miracles. And this one is sort of like that. It has a lot that we learn from it. Even 20 years ago, they were still learning from the, the, the tilma, the, the, the coat of Juan Diego. They're still learning things from it. That how powerful God is and how much power he gives to his mother. So they see this image of Our Lady. And it's, it's all in the design of the Aztec drawings. And she stands in front of the sun. She's more important than the sun in the sense that 
the sun was something worshipped by the Aztecs. The Aztec people thought the sun was a god. And now she is blocking out the sun. She is more important than the sun. She has conquered the sun god. Her feet are on the, the crescent moon, which is one of their symbols for their, their serpent god, the feathered serpent god. She's standing on top. She has conquered that god as well. She's wearing the color of the royalty of the Aztecs, that, that type of that sort of blue that she's wearing. Around her waist is the belt that a, a pregnant woman would wear. And in fact, some of the scientists, uh, the doctors who studied it say, actually looking at the shape of it, and she seems to be very close within a few weeks of giving birth. Well, it's December the, December the 12th. It's only two weeks away from Christmas. Her hands are still joined in prayer. That means she is not a god. She's praying to someone higher than herself. This is a very important thing. Our Lady, she is not God, but she is pointing towards the way to God by prayer. The arrangement of the stars on, on, her, on her mantle are the exact constellations in the sky that were there on the, 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 the day of her appearance to, uh, to, to the bishop and to Juan Diego. That's that solstice in December. Of 1531 at that exact time you know you can track constellations by very accurately and even more impressive as a miracle that this this cloth it's not even cloth made of vegetable made of cactus a plant made of a plant fiber really cheap and poor it still exists after 500 years that's unbelievable and there are there are about 50 other miracles associated with this this image the scientists can't figure out how they painted. If it was, it's not a painting, but if someone were to try to paint on cactus fibers, it wouldn't look like that. They say that even the, the colors are not on the fibers of the cloth. It's actually floating. It's incredible. The, the ability that look into the pupils, the eyes of Our Lady, they can see a reverse image of the Bishop Zamoraga. They can see the Bishop in Our Lady's eyes when she appears to them. There are hundreds of these sorts of uh, showing of the omnipotence of God and the power he gives to his blessed mother. Any scientist who study this cannot, cannot but say this is beyond the power of mankind, which is exactly what interests us. This is what interests us, is that we need the help beyond our own power. This is the, the humiliating, the humbling fact of this. And as I said to you, uh, the Bishop Zambaraga, immediately he goes after seeing this magnificent thing, immediately get, get start construction on that hill as Our Lady requested. Thousands of, of these uh, Mexican Indians start to gather uh, at the, the opening of this new chapel because they have seen the image themselves and they say, now we have a mother of our own. This virgin is one of us. She's one of us. She's not just some Spanish devotion that someone brought over. She is truly one of us. And a great enthusiasm, all of the, the soldiers, the warriors have their bows and arrows and they shoot their bows and arrows up in the air, just like nowadays we would shoot guns in the air. They shoot their bows and arrows up in the air out of celebration. And then one of the arrows comes back down and kills somebody. And they carry that dead person with the arrow through them into the chapel that's just been opened, place them at the foot of Our Lady's image, and they pray. And the dead man wakes up and walks at the very day of the opening of the chapel, a miracle seen by thousands. And after that, very soon after that, within the next 10 years, 9 million people converted. There's even one Franciscan priest there who kept a journal, a diary, and he himself did nearly 1 million baptisms, 1 million in his lifetime, 1 million. They said it was so difficult because they didn't have enough missionaries, just like nowadays, that they had to line the people up in these long queues, these long lines. They had priests stationed along different sections to do the, the exorcisms, to do the anointing with oils, and then finally one priest at the end to do all of the, the pouring of the water and the saying of the words of baptism. There were so many. The priests said they could not travel from village to village without being basically kidnapped 
by the villagers and brought in there saying, you must stay here. We have so many marriages, you know, please bless our marriages. Do, please baptize our, our people. Please give us the sacraments. Please say mass for us. So hungry were they for the faith. They would do anything for it. All because Our Lady in one single moment gives us her picture, works this miracle of Our Lady Guadalupe. And at that time, as you know, in Europe, millions of people were losing the faith to Protestantism and these other false religions. At the same time, Our Lady doubles the number of Catholics in Mexico. My dear faithful, this is just a reminder, this is tomorrow's feast day. It's not really a feast day because it's Advent. But December the 12th, and it, she is the empress, or the patroness, but the empress of all of America. By America, I mean North, Central, South America. We, and it's not simply for the Americas, but also for all of us. A great display of the mercy of God, of the love of God, of how much he wants the salvation of those, even the most horrible pagans. Well, these, these Aztecs were, were vicious and terrible in their actions, and yet they were very advanced in their civilization. As she converted the, the hearts and the souls of these Aztec Indians, we want to ask her help to convert our, our own hearts that we do not murder ourselves by sin, we do not murder others by sin or by bad example, that we want her to ask to restore modesty, purity, bring about an end to the sacrifice of children in the womb, and more importantly, of course, than all of this, convert the souls of our nations. Our Lady Guadalupe, pray for us. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.